Hello, hello, it's Monica from Crafting with Schooling Lady and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. In today's video, I'm going to show you three ways how to stretch your cutting dice using a free gift from Simply Cut and Paper Craft Magazine issue 233. I'm going to start with the easiest card to more advanced super simple tutorial so if you're interested how i created those projects i'm going to show you step by step they are super easy but you only need the free gift and some dice from your stash in the magazine you've got lots of beautiful projects and ideas to try but also there is a sketch challenge designed by Marta Dembicka. So if you're interested, I left the link in the description down below with her YouTube channel where you can see how she created her sketch for this magazine's issue. Also in the magazine, you've got that beautiful textured owl by Lou Collins and I absolutely love it and we also have some sentiments as well and I'm going to use both of them for all three cards. I absolutely love this owl. I think it is perfect for so many occasions but in today's video I'm going to focus on male cards. So if you have this issue, I hope you'll feel inspired to create something along with me. In the magazine, there is also a link to three design papers. And as you can see, I printed them. And what's really good about any digital collection, you can print them as many times as you want. And also you can resize them, which is absolutely stunning. However, for today's project, I'm going to stay with A4 size. There is also some stamp set collection from Hunky Dory with Under the Sea theme. I absolutely love all those images. So if I have some time over the weekend, I will probably record that video with those images as well. I absolutely love the sentiment. They put a really big smile on my face. So maybe... As I said, if I have some time over the weekend, I will create those cards. First, I'm going to start with that beautiful design paper. And I'm also going to use craft card from Crafters Companion. And I thought some blues and brown will work so well for that beautiful textured owl. I'm also going to use Tonic Studio cutting die called... Memory Book Maker Base Creator Die Set and all the names of the products I use in today's video you can check in the description down below. I'm going to cut the bigger die twice from Craft Card and the smaller one with that beautiful design paper. And as you can see, the bigger die has a flap at the top, so we're actually going to use scissors to trim it a little bit. Super quick, easy. So this way you can actually use your album cutting dice to create beautiful shaped cuts and I do encourage you to use it because as you can see the shape is very unusual beautiful but perfect for any occasion so this is the first trick for you if you want to stretch your dice now I'm going to use uh, my scoring board and create the flap on the back panel so it is super easy to assemble the card together. And to do it, I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue, magic glue, because it is the perfect adhesive for any card making. And it's always a good idea to open your card and burnish it inside. To add a little bit more interest, I'm going to use Distress Oxiding and Ink Blending Tool. And as you can see, I only apply that color on the edges of my base. So yes, you can do it even when you put the back and the front panels together. Now I'm going to add a little bit more color and this time I've got broken china from Distress Oxiding and I'm going to apply that color on our smaller panel. And this way we're going to have more interest and dimension on our card. I wonder how often these design papers included in the magazine. Maybe you have your favorite if you do Please let me know what is it. Now I'm going to die cut that owl using the same craft card from Crafters Companion. I absolutely love it. Now I'm going to put the die again on our die cut and using low tack tape I'm going to put them together because this time we're going to add a little bit more dimension and interest to our owl using ink blending tool super quick and easy as you can see this owl has some beautiful small elements and using those inks you really 
give that owl more life. I really like it and I've never seen a die like this. So thank you so much, Luke Collins. It is perfect. And I absolutely enjoyed creating all those three projects. It is always a good idea to clean your flat surface whenever you use any ink pads. Now, using my pokey tool, I'm going to take the owl out of our die and it is nearly ready. But we still have to create a sentiment. And to do it, I decided to actually cut Happy Birthday apart. So yes, you can do it. You won't really damage your stamp. Just make sure you don't really cut any of the letters. As you can see, I folded the stamp and this way it was so easy to cut it apart. But if I want, I can always sum those two words together. That is not a problem. And now to add a little bit more dimension and interest and also some gloss finish, I'm going to use heat embossing. But I'm not going to use um, very beautiful and gold embossing powder. This time I'm going to use Parakeet Opaque Pigment Ink from Spectrum Noir. All opaque ink pads are usually uh, wet for a very long time, so we can use some embossing powder. And in this case, I'm going to use clear gloss wow embossing powder. As you can see, I've got a very big jar and it is perfect for using any ink pads from your stash, even distress oxide ink. So I do encourage you to do it because this way you don't need those embossing powders in every single color. You can use your ink pads. Now, when this is ready, we have to start assembling all those elements together. And to do it, again, I'm using my one and only liquid glue, magic glue. And to add a little bit more dimension on the owl, I'm going to use some double-sided foam adhesive pads. And I really like this idea. And it's always, always a good idea to add a few drops of liquid glue, then double-sided foam pad and a little bit of liquid glue again. And this way, not only the cut will be stronger, but it will be attached forever. And that's exactly what we want when we want the recipient to keep it forever. Now, as you can see, this owl has some elements that you can lift. And in this case, I really didn't think it through. I should have done it just before I put it on the card base. But that is absolutely fine. You can always use your pokey tool. Now, using my very long scissors, I'm going to cut the sentiment. Super quick and easy. And actually, I'm going to repeat the same process for two other projects. Super simple. And you always can use your scraps from your previous projects. And that's exactly what I did here. I used scrap of 300 GSM white stamping card from Crafters Companion. And I used that beautiful pigment opaque ink from Spectrum Noir Parakeet to add that sentiment and have a little bit more variation on my project. And I do wonder, have you ever used blues and browns together? If you have, please let me know what did you create. I think at the moment it is my favorite color palette because if you haven't seen my previous videos this month, I've got loads with these two colors. Now it is time to add gems and I decided to add them on the owl's eyes using my one and only liquid glue and our cut is finished. What do you think about the first project? I really like using those um, Tonic Studio dies because the cut stands proudly on a flat surface. For the second project, I decided to use Tone Edge Nestables from Creative Craft Products and I'm going to create my card base using Craft Card from Crafters Companion. I'm also going to cut some of the design paper and create a smaller frame using Craft Card. And again, we've got that beautiful owl and again, I use 300 GSM white stamping card and I use a scrap. And again, we've got a scoring board and we have to create a flap just to make sure our cut is beautifully finished. So again, you can use any nesting dice from your stash. And I do encourage you, if you don't have your nesting dice, you can actually create your own panels using your trimmer. So with this card can be in a square shape, rectangular shape. Literally, whatever you want. You can also use Cycle Cutter 
if you have it. Again, I'm going to use Distress Oxiding and Ink Blending tool to apply the color on our card base. And I couldn't resist, I had to use that broken china on that blue design paper. I absolutely love it, how it turned out. And for this design paper, I really thought I really like the design, but let's put it on a diagonal line. Why not? I thought if we have octagon here, so let's go a little bit crazy with the design paper. Now I'm going to apply the same distress oxiding on the outside of the smaller frame for extra dimension and interest. I wonder, do you actually create frames for your cards using nesting dice? If you do, tell me what's your favorite shape. Now we're going to create a background panel for our frame. As you can see, I turned my design paper over and using my pencil, I just drew the outline. Super quick, easy, and now we're going to trim it using our scissors. I really like that technique, so it is perfect, but if it's not, you can always use your scissors to trim it a little bit more. And what's really good about this card, adding a little bit more dimension, I use double-sided foam adhesive and I cut it into smaller pieces. And again, as you can see, I've got that happy birthday sentiment using parakeet opaque pigmenting from Spectrum Noir. And this time I'm going to use two tri blend alcohol markers from Spectrum Noir to color in my owl. And I've got true blend, true blue blend, and blue turquoise shades. And this way you can actually add so many colors using just two pens, because in every single tri blend markers you've got three different colors. So as you can see, I also die cut one more owl, and I'm actually adding that color on some of the elements and I'm going to fussy cut them. I really like that technique and I think it adds so much to that beautiful owl design. Have you tried that technique before? If you haven't, use your alcohol markers to add more dimension to your small elements. And if you do have this beautiful textured owl as a free gift, please let me know what would be your favorite color palette for this owl or maybe you actually have it and you created the project and you named an owl if you have please let me know what's its name now i'm going to fussy cut those elements we created on the second owl and we're going to attach all of them using one and only liquid glue magic glue it is a book binding glue and it works so well even if you ink all your elements. So that's why I really like it. And if you even have small elements, you can use smaller scissors as well. Um, I didn't really struggle here and I use my crafters companion scissors. And even with the feet, if you want to add a little bit more dimension, you can use tiny bit of double-sided foam pad. In this case, I decided against it because I think this card already has some really nice dimension, so I don't need anything extra. And I wonder, what is your favorite bird? Do you have it? Maybe you like to create cards with parrots or, I don't know, maybe other birds. If you do, please let me know what is it. Now I was trying to put the owl on a diagonal line, but um, let's say <laughs> reverse to our design paper for extra interest. And I mentioned, because I really wanted to create cool, composition. If you like it, please let me know in the comments down below. It's always a good idea to use a pokey tool to peel off the backing of your double-sided foam pads. And again, I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue to put all those elements together. So, so far, I really like it, but we have to add a sentiment and a few gems on the owl and our card will be complete. I do wonder, how often do you use gems in your card making? Maybe you have your favorite color. I usually go with gold, but today I thought my challenge will be not to use gold gems for those projects. That's why I've got some blues and browns. And yes, again, I'm going to use some double-sided foam pads for our sentiment and our card will be done. There is plenty of space inside to write your own message. If you want, you can actually die cut one more octagon using white card and then you can write your message. However, I think the craft card is absolutely fine. Please let me know 
What do you think about the second project? If you haven't used nesting base to create shape cuts, I do encourage you to do it. Now for the third project, I had a look at my stash and I found that beautiful decadent butterfly cutting die from Crafter's Companion. It is meant to create 3D projects, however, we're going to create a card base using it. So as you can see, I'm using my 300 GSM white stamping card and I'm going to trace the outline of the die using my pencil and I'm going to fussy cut them. And this way we're going to have the front and the back of our card. And I think this shape is so unique. We don't really see it very often. And now I'm going to create a background. I'm going to use one of the design papers. As you can see, I traced the smaller circle. And now I'm leaving slightly big gap because this has to be bigger than our inside. And this way you can actually use any of the design papers included in the magazine. Now we have to create a flap for our card for our back panel. And as you can see, you can create beautiful cuts with any dies from your stash. So if you still haven't decided what to create, if you have those dimensional dies from Crafters Companion, use them because this shape is so unique and beautiful. And yes, why not? Now I'm going to use Distress Oxide Ink in Price Ribbon Color. And I'm going to add that on all the edges of our project. As you can see, I wasn't happy with some of the elements at the bottom. So yes, you can always use your scissors to trim the excess. Now, I really think that Distress Oxide Inks or literally any inks from your stash add so much if you actually distress the edges. And I really like it in my projects. I think it adds so much interest. But maybe have your favorite color to do it. Now I use the same die and craft card and I die cut it a couple of times. I would say even a lot. But in the end, I actually didn't use three of them. So I've got some leftovers for my future project. I don't really know what is going to be at the moment, but I'm going to keep those three beautiful die cuts and yes I will create something later on. As you can see I'm going to attach all those panels together using my one and only liquid glue but I'm not going to show you how to do it because you know. So I'm just going to show you the first one and when all of these are ready we're going to have really nice dimension and saying that we can create a shaker card. I decided to do a shaker card because I haven't done it in such a long time. So I thought today is the day. And even then, when I created that shaker element, I thought it is so good with that beautiful design paper. And I really wanted our owl to match that design paper. So later on, I'm going to show you how I colored in that owl. Now to add a little bit more dimension to our, let's say, snow globe owl element, I'm going to use Distress Oxide Ink and Ink Blending Tool on all those edges. Super quick, simple, but it really makes a difference. Now I've got a little bit of acetate. It is heavyweight acetate, and we're going to create that shaker element. As you can see, I'm using my scissors to trim off the excess and you can always do it when you stick your acetate as well because you probably will have some excess and that's exactly what I'm going to do later on. And I found the best way to actually adhere the acetate for shaker elements is to use red liner tape. And in this case, I'm going to use 3mm from Crafters Companion. If you have a better trick how to use or attach acetate for shaker elements, please let me know in the comments down below. So yes, I'm going to use my pokey tool to peel off the backing of red liner tape, attach the acetate, and again I'm going to get rid of the excess of some of the acetate and using 3mm red liner tape again, I'm going to put it on and add few drops of liquid glue. I wonder how often do you create shaker cards and what is the occasion you use them for? 
please let me know in the comments down below because the last shaker card I created was for the first birthday in the shape of a balloon I absolutely love it and I thought why not let's make more of them because they are kinetic cards they move and I think they really put a big smile on the recipient as you can see from my stash I I'm going to use some of the sequins. I've got loads. I have them for, I think, eight years now. And as you can see, the box is still full. So maybe I just have to create more shaker cards. So yes, I'm going to peel off the backing of my 3mm red liner tape, add a few drops of liquid glue here and there, just to make sure everything is adhered properly. And when we put that on top, the shaker card works so well so in this case as you can see i didn't use any foam parts because the bottom of that cutting die is very intricate and that would be very tricky to do it now with our owl i decided to use some distress oxide inks to cut it in and i'm going to use stormy sky as well it is very beautiful color i just couldn't resist and i think it works so well with broken china and a prize ribbon if you have your favorite three um inks from distress oxide inks um, set please let me know what are they now as you can see i'm adding uh, some of the colors here and there and i'm going to use low tuck tape to put our beautiful die cut on top of the cutting die and using my ink blending tool i'm going to add all those details using price ribbon because it is the darkest color from all those three here and i really like this effect it gives so much dimension to our beautiful owl and yes it is a good idea to always clean your dye straight away because if you don't do it you probably will forget about it and later on everything will be covered with your fingerprints now i was thinking where to put the owl maybe in the middle of our shaker element or at the top and i decided to do it at the top i think that works so well if you don't want to have such a big uh, shaker card you can create your element using square nesting dice if you want or literally any nesting dice from your stash so let's do it let's create something beautiful and amazing and yes when this is ready as you can see i'm using my pokey tool to lift some of the elements up for extra dimension as i said i really like this owl and to be honest, when I was creating those three projects, I die cut those owls a lot. And I really mean a lot. So I'm going to keep them for future projects. I think these owls will work so well for thank you teachers cards or, as I said before, mail cards as well. Now it is time to add the sentiment and I couldn't resist. I had to add some gems. So in this case, we're going to have some dark blue and light blue gems and our card will be complete. There is plenty of space to write the message inside the card. And what's really good about this, it is a shaker card. So yes, you can shake it, shake, 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 and it is done. Please let me know what do you think about project number three. And now you can see all three cards side by side. And I wonder, what do you think about them? Do you like that color palette? Do you like all the shapes here? Or would you change anything? I... I really want to know which one is your favorite. Thank you so much for watching and spending that time with me. Don't forget that every Monday and Thursday I've got videos on my channel. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. See you in my next video. Bye for now.